Okay, in this video, you will learn about the concentration of a solution. So let's take a look at the properties of a solution. A solution contains a solute, which is the chemical that is being dissolved, and a solvent, which is the chemical that does the dissolving. The solute is typically present in a smaller amount than the solvent. If we have salt dissolved in water, then the water would be the solvent, and the salt is the solute. We can describe a solution in a qualitative way without using any numbers. We can say that a solution is dilute, or concentrated, or even saturated, but these terms would simply be describing in a relative way whether we have a little or a lot of solute. And saturated would mean that we have the maximum amount of solute that can possibly be dissolved in that particular volume of solvent. But it's important for us as we're doing calculations with stoichiometry to talk about a quantitative method of describing a solution. And that's where molarity comes in. So let's define molarity is the ratio of moles of solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters. We symbolize molarity with a capital M. And so per example here, you can see that we have 2.5 moles of solute per liter. I would describe that solution as a 2.5 molar solution. And I can either write 2.5 with a capital M, or I can write 2.5 moles per liter. They mean the same thing. In these series of pictures, you can see that you might begin to prepare a solution starting with a solid solute. First by measuring the mass of the solid on the scale, and then transferring that solid to a volumetric flask. Now, a volumetric flask is a very precise piece of glassware. You pick the volumetric flask based on the volume that you want your final solution to be. And in the neck of the flask, there is a specific line that is etched into the glass, and that particular line tells you the final volume of your solution. So first you'll add water to dissolve your solid, and then, once the solid has been dissolved, you will add a little bit more water, and then drop by drop, you adjust the final volume of the liquid so that the bottom of the meniscus is even with the mark on the flask. All right, let's take a look at how you would calculate the amount of solute that you need. If you know the volume and the molarity, then we simply multiply those two quantities together. Molarity times the volume in liters, equals moles. And once you know the moles of solute, then you can convert that to grams using the information on the periodic table for that particular chemical. All right, in this video, we'll take a look at a preparation of a solution starting with a solid. To prepare a solution of known concentration from a solid solute, we must first weigh out an appropriate amount of the solid. For example, to prepare 250 milliliters of a 1 molar solution of copper sulfate, we first weigh out 0 0.250 moles of copper sulfate. Most commonly, copper sulfate is available as the pentahydrate. The formula mass of copper sulfate pentahydrate is 249.7. We weigh out precisely one-fourth of this mass, 62.4 grams. Note that the weight on the balance is the sum of the paper and copper sulfate. We next transfer the copper sulfate completely to a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Water is added and the flask swirl to dissolve the solid. Finally, water is added to bring the total volume in the flask to exactly 250 milliliters. Okay, well another way you can prepare a solution is by taking an existing solution and doing a dilution, where we add a certain portion of that solution to another flask. And as you can see in the pictures, they've taken a solution that has a dark blue color, they've taken a portion of it and added it to another volumetric flask and added water. So the final volume is going to be adjusted in the same way but now you have a new solution prepared, and as you can see in that final picture, the new solution has a lighter color in blue, a lighter shade of blue. So a diluted solution has a lower concentration than what you started with. 
So if you knew the volume and the molarity of the solution, and when you calculate moles, so molarity times volume equals moles, now you're not looking to calculate how many grams of solute you need. What you're looking for would be to either calculate the volume of the solution that you need to measure out, or perhaps you might be calculating the final molarity of the diluted solution. So in this equation, M stands for molarity, and V stands for the volume. M times V equals M times V, where C stands for concentrated solution, and D stands for diluted solution. The volume does not necessarily have to be in liters in this case, because it's a proportion. So as long as you have the same unit of volume on both sides of the equation, you can use milliliters, and the numbers, the proportion, will still work out. Okay, so in this example, they're going to prepare a solution from a known concentrated solution to make it more dilute. Suppose we wish to form a solution of known concentration by diluting a more concentrated solution of known concentration. We wish to prepare 250 milliliters of a 0.100 molar copper sulfate solution, beginning with a 1 molar stock solution. We first withdraw precisely 25 milliliters of the stock solution with a 25 milliliter pipette. This amount of stock solution is then added to the 250 milliliter volumetric flask. We then add water and swirl the flask to ensure good mixing with the added water. More water is added to bring the volume to the mark on the flask that indicates precisely 250 milliliters. We now have our final solution of 0.100 molar copper sulfate. Okay, so now I'd like to just to remind you that there is a difference in the choice of glassware. You may remember that there is an Erlenmeyer flask, which is different than a volumetric flask. So this video will just remind you why a volumetric flask is more accurate. Different volume flasks have different air values. However, the air on a volumetric flask is much lower than any other type of glassware of similar volume. For example, the volume markings on a beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask are only accurate to plus or minus 5%, meaning if the meniscus were on the 500 milliliter line, it could be anywhere between 475 milliliters and 525 milliliters. On the other hand, using a volumetric flask, we know that the volume is exactly somewhere between 499.8 milliliters and 500.2 milliliters, meaning it's much more accurate. Okay, so now we come to four example problems in which it gives you an idea of how molarity is used to do various calculations in chemistry. Example number one, what is the molarity of a solution that contains 8.36 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in a total volume of 250.0 milliliters? We're going to begin by converting 8.36 grams of sodium chloride into moles. So we multiply by our conversion factor that puts one mole of sodium chloride on the top and 58.44 grams of sodium chloride on the bottom. And this number comes from the atomic masses of sodium and chlorine added together. You'll notice that the answer is not the final answer. So I didn't round off my number here to three sig figs. I kept some extra digits of precision, and I would do this if I had it on my calculator. So I'm just showing you that the answer is approximately 0.143 moles. To convert milliliters into liters, all we have to do is divide by 1,000. And so we get 0 0.2500 liters. Now, what is the molarity of this solution? We take moles divided by liters, and then round off our answer to three significant figures. And we get the answer is 0 0.572 moles per liter. Or you could say this is a 0 0.572 molar solution of sodium chloride. In our next example, we're looking for what mass of solute that we would have to measure out in order to prepare a solution with a volume of 100.0 milliliters and a concentration of 1.87 moles per liter. Let's start with converting the information that we have into moles. 
So I already went ahead and converted my volume from milliliters to liters. So dividing by 1,000, I have 0 0.1000 liters. I multiply by the molarity, and notice that when I write the molarity, instead of writing capital M, I break this down into a conversion factor, 1.87 moles of sodium chloride per liter. This is the definition of molarity, but this will help me to visualize why I'm canceling out the units of liters. And now I have to convert this number of moles into grams, and as you recall, that was 58.44 grams of sodium chloride per mole. So my final answer, rounded off to three sig figs, is 10.9 grams of sodium chloride. If I were in the laboratory and I had measured out 10.9 grams of sodium chloride and then transferred that solid to a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, added a small amount of water to dissolve the solid, and then carefully added enough water so that the final volume was exactly 100 milliliters, that is the bottom of the meniscus was even with the mark etched in the volumetric flask, then I would have prepared a 1.87 molar solution of sodium chloride. Okay, our next two examples have to do with the dilution equation that I showed you. Here we have a solution that was prepared by starting with 37.5 milliliters of 6.25 molar sodium hydroxide. It was diluted with water so that the final volume was 200.0 milliliters. And the question is asking for what the molarity of the diluted solution is. So in our equation, we'll be solving for MD, that is the molarity of the diluted solution. The molarity of the concentrated solution is 6.25 molar. The volume of the concentrated solution is 37.5 milliliters. And notice that I'm not gonna convert that to liters as long as I keep the units of milliliters on both sides of the equation, I'm fine. Our final volume is 200.0 milliliters, and I'm solving for the molarity of the diluted solution. When I do this math, I get a molarity of 1.17 moles per liter. Okay, in our last example problem, the question wants to know what volume of 3.5 molar hydrochloric acid is needed to prepare 500.0 milliliters of a 0 0.625 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So we're doing a dilution, but now we know the concentration of both the beginning and the end. We know the final volume. We're gonna be solving for the initial volume of the concentrated solution. So how much do we need to prepare the solution? We plug in our information. So there represents the concentration of the initial and the final solution. And we're solving for the volume of the concentrated solution that we need and we get 89.3 milliliters. Again, if we were in the laboratory and we had access to a 3.50 molar hydrochloric acid solution, we would carefully measure out 89.3 milliliters of this solution, transfer that solution to a 500 milliliter volumetric flask, and then add enough water to the solution so that the final volume was exactly 500 milliliters. Well, hopefully these example problems and the information in this video helped you to understand a little bit about solution concentration and molarity. And again, as you're working the practice problems that I'm giving you for homework, feel free to watch this video again or pause it when necessary. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.